Hello and welcome to this very special podcast interview with the Greek-Australian filmmaker Bill Mazoulis. My name is Chris Luskri and I am a friend and sometime collaborator of Bill's, having commissioned a series of vertical screen short films for the two editions of the 916 Film Festival, uh, the latter as part of the Adelaide Film Festival in 2015. These include the work Three Strikes, a short film which immediately precedes his latest features, the Greek crisis set resistance musical Songs of Revolution, as well as Songs of the Underground, a shorter companion documentary that repurposes much of the original and invaluable concert recordings and live musical performances in the larger semi-fictional film. What follows is an extensive audio interview with Bill about the process, politics and aesthetics behind the making of these radically different but complementary films. Joyous, overflowing and invaluable as active testament to the thriving post-crisis Greek culture, the Songs Project serves as the epic centerpiece of Bill's mid-career exploration of the vital and poetic nature of Greek identity. Both his own and by extension as a second generation Greek Australian, his mother country. A country that perhaps exists now mainly in acts of creation and congress. A flower on the verge of being stomped upon, wild and precious. This interview will be interspersed with several performances taken from the Songs Project, signifying the diversity of musical forms and approaches used in the two films. These find complement and counterpoint in Bill's alternately pared back and subtly expansive filmic style. Let's get to it. The film's structure is quite unusual. I mean, you've you've structured it essentially like, uh, you know, a a double or triple album with... uh, Four sides? Three sides? Four sides? Uh, well, the, the, if it's a triple album, it's got six sides. Six sides. Six uh, <laughs> it, it's, like, um, it's, like, it's like George Harrison's all, all Things Must Pass, except in my case, I didn't have everything bottled up inside me for years waiting for release because uh, I've been making films. But uh, yeah, yeah, for me, it was it's, it's like um, this uh, great collection uh, or montage of of different uh, scenes and, and songs and 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 I hope that when people view it, uh, it, it always maintains their interest because uh, stylistically uh, and formally, um, the film is uh, quite uh, eclectic and quite different. Um, as it goes along, you you never quite know what to expect next. This comes to, I guess, the unusual structure of the film is that we're not uh, used to seeing musicals, or what is essentially kind of musical, structured structured in this kind of um, hybridized way between uh, different uh, film styles and um, different approaches, even within the music itself, because you, you use quite a wide array of uh, Greek music that I wasn't familiar with, you know, punk underground music, but also classic, uh, an uh, uh folk songs. Uh, blues, some rock and roll, even some um, spoken word poetry, I think, at one point. So at, at what point were you uh, conscious about wanting to um, provide a kind of uh, a more eclectic musical and formal experience? Uh, probably from the very start. Um, uh, I, I basically wanted to tap into um, and capture... Uh, a certain energy that that I felt uh, existed in Greek music uh, of the past and but also of the present and uh, even though I myself favor certain styles over others uh, I, I like uh, punk and post punk um, and I guess rock or alternative rock more than I like uh, folk music or you know jazzier kind of things or, or more classic uh, rock things um, but I realized that a whole bunch of uh, things existed in in Greece and uh, the one criteria I did have of course is that uh, all the songs were somehow uh, political in nature or 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 part of like the a resistance uh, movement that's existed in Greece for for many years and and continues to this day so there there was a there was a plethora of, uh, of people to choose from songs to choose from and the, the film in the end is quite long. It's just on two hours and it could have been longer as long, well. Long. But <laughs> What's that? It's your longest feature film, in, I think, by, by quite it a is. wide margin. It, it is my longest one. Um, and and uh, in the past, I've pretty much made films at around the 70 to 80 minute mark rather than 90 or 100 or 110. So this one is 118. 
And I, I just felt I wanted to, to make a film that was just bursting um, with its uh, content and 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 also as a as a musical or as a music documentary first. Uh, I really wanted to make sure that the music uh, did get privileged, and so some songs are held for the entirety of the song. Some are, some are held for half the song or something like that because I, I really don't like that those conventional documentaries where we see talking heads and and then we see just snippets uh, of the music. Uh, I really wanted to uh, show more of uh, the music. I wonder if you could speak a bit about, I guess, the three central uh, male figures that are almost kind of like satellites around the, which the film is uh, organized, uh, who are, of course, uh, Antoine Parinis, Thanos Lost, and uh, Mitsos Polikakos. I mean, uh, was there a certain order in which you, you started uh, selecting these, these figures to sort of represent, I guess, key facets of the uh, contemporary Greek underground music scene? Yeah, there, there is a certain order. I mean, you kind of uh, look at the history of um, of Greek music, of uh, rock music, especially, and and I, I mean, the the first thing was that um, for someone for me to interview someone, that means that they're still alive, of course, and and if they're still yeah. alive, most of these people are, are performing still, and and uh, Dimitris Polikakos uh, as the elder statesman, as the as the godfather. Uh, of of this whole scene, he's now seventy four, so um, he he started in the sixties, uh, mid to late sixties, uh, as a almost a, in a bit of a kind of beatnik uh, way. Uh, he was uh, like a kind of Bob Dylan uh, figure almost, and uh, 
um, and and very and quite radicalized uh, from the uh, a young age and 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 also someone who was uh, prepared to uh, yep stand up for their their beliefs. There, there's a really great anecdote um, which I'll, I'll just relay uh, just quickly to give you an idea um, when yeah. when when the when the uh, junta took over Greece on April 21st, 1967. Uh, Dimitri was a, a young man of uh, 23 or 24, uh, around that kind of range. And uh, it was such a chaotic moment um, for, for Greek life, uh, that moment when the army took over, that uh, the next day, Dimitri, he, he walked around for a couple of days with a pistol in his pocket. Um, just in case uh, anything uh, uh, untoward was going to happen to him. He wasn't going to just sit back and, and let them uh, arrest him and then torture him and, and all that kind of thing. Uh, so, you know, he, he's a pivotal figure. He, he went on to um, have, a, have a really good career as a, as a, as a rocker and, um, and, and, and also as... As someone who, uh, yeah, just is a spokesperson for um, resistance in a way. Um, yeah, the the other two, uh, Thanos uh, Kois from Lost Bodies, uh, he's been at it for about thirty years now, and his band Lost Bodies is one of the most eclectic bands uh, you'll ever you'll ever see or, or hear. And Antoine Pardinis is the third person I chose for a major interview. He's uh, a bit younger. Well, he hasn't turned 40 yet. He's about, I think he's 39 at the moment. And and he's, uh, he's, a, he's a really great figure too. He's a great counterbalance because he brings a, quite a young man's energy against the kind of two elder statesmen figures almost. Yeah, yeah. So um, the, in the, in, and in the film, there's a few other um, kind of people who were interviewed just kind of quickly and... Uh, I wish I had more younger people in the film, but I couldn't really find many. Um, I was also disappointed that I couldn't find many female uh, punks in a way, kind of like Riot Girl type figures or, or even someone, you know, akin to uh, a PJ Harvey, for example. I couldn't uh, really find um, a, a lot of figures like this. Um, uh, Greek uh, societies is slightly... Uh, repressive towards females, um, unfortunately. So even in the underground uh, music scene, there's, there's a, is this, you, you would, would you say that this bias is kind of still present? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, even in the underground music scene, um, uh, there's, there's still room for, for more female involvement, uh, I believe. Um, yeah. Yeah. But of course, this is counterbalanced in the film with uh, two uh, younger figures uh, who kind of. Uh, are the structure, I think, of the the second and the fourth movements, respectively, side two and side four. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. One of them is, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Christos Vasilopoulos. Uh, well, he's a he's a he, he's a bit part, he's a he's a small uh, part actor. So you're, the the person you're thinking of is Thodoris Arianutsos. Um, who's oh, the yes, who's the lead actor in that section, and and then there's also Marianthi Kolyaki, uh, who's the lead of the other section. They, these are two sections that are quite different to other sections in the film, uh, because they actually are like uh, your, your classic musical where the actors are uh, are miming to to songs, uh, and acting out certain narratives. Um, so for me, it was it was great fun doing these sequences. Uh, as something different to the documentary sequences, and and just as something that I've always wanted to do from 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 looking at uh, Umbrellas of Shaburg in the past, or or Chantal Ackerman's Golden Eighties, I, I always wanted to do something like this uh, myself as well. And it's interesting because I remember when you were first talking about the project a few years mm-hmm. ago. It took shape in my mind as something very different to what it ultimately ended up being uh, in its current form as Songs of Revolution. I know there's an alternate cut, which is, a, um, I guess, a more pure documentary called Songs of the Underground. Yeah. Um, yeah. Songs of Revolution really does have this quite radical break or shifts in different styles, which is unusual even for filmmakers like uh, Jacques Demy and, and uh, Chantal Ackerman, that there really is a sense sure. of... Uh, 
almost kind of inhabiting alternate planes or alternate universes, uh, you know, within the space of the film itself. Um, and the difference between the male and the female figures, uh, the, the younger people in those two segments, seem to suggest that um, almost as if a kind of fantasy or a, or a kind of projection of youth into fiction is kind of one of the... Is, is a mode quite substantially different to the way that the older figures engage in music. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess so. And, and I guess it's also um, uh, uh, picturing or portraying, um, you know, younger people and how they're dealing with the crisis. So, so the, the two figures um, we're talking about are, are in their 20s. Uh, actually, the, the female Marianti is more like 32, but she comes across as yeah. a bit younger. Uh, whereas the guy, uh, Fuluri, he's actually quite young. He's actually 24 or 25, I believe. So, uh, yeah. so, so when, when you're that age and you're, you're trying um, uh, just personally to, to do something in, in a country um, that is in crisis and therefore, you know, the, uh, you know, the artists, you know, really struggle to, um, you know, kind of have, uh, make any kind of money uh, out of their art. Uh, but basically, you know, they're playing characters uh, in their sections. Um, but again, I, I structure it differently. Thought that he plays the one character pretty much over the five songs that he's in, whereas Marianthi plays a, a different character in, in her five uh, songs. So there's a, you know, she does a different character for each song. Uh, but basically, they're, they're situations of uh, like the crisis. You know, we see Marianthi going to work or being destitute on the streets or or being um, like uh, held in a in a prison um, uh, for for one of the songs uh, so um, it's yeah it's just something I wanted to do just play with the form I always like to uh, uh, just try and throw different things into um, you know the films uh, that I make um, because I, I guess it's the it's the it's the god art in me that the, the, the pesky yeah. fellow uh, just, you know, will keep coming out uh, until I die, probably. So. Αγγελίες. Έχουν ανοίξει λέει λάκους και μας περιμένουνε Τι λέτε ρε μαλάκες ρε, τι λέτε ρε Θα περιπλανηθούμε σαν τον πολεμοχάρη τον τρίτο Ανάμεσα από τους πύργους των πολυεθνικών Ανάμεσα από τα κρυστάλλινα κτίρια των διαφημιστικών και των ασφαλιστικών Θα τους τραβήξουμε, θα τους βγάλουμε μέσα από τα γραφεία τους και θα τους πούμε Αρκετά ρε μαλάκες με την κονόμα και τις μαλακίες σας μας γαμίσατε Αρκετά ρε μαλάκες με την κονόμα μας γαμίσατε Αρκετά ρε μαλάκες Αρκετά 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 Έτσι. Να τους τραβήξουμε, να τους βγάλουμε μέσα από τα μύτη και να τους δείξουμε πόσο υπέροχα καίγονται τα πολυτελέστατα αυτοκίνητα τους τα οδοφράγματα και να τους πούμε αρκετά ρε μαλάκες με την κόνομα και τις μαλακίες σας μας γαμίσατε αρκετά ρε μαλάκες με την κόνομα μας γαμίσατε αρκετά ρε μαλάκες αρκετά Arcadal, 
Μισά φιλιά There seems to be a, a kind of quite measurably different energy to these films than the films you've made uh, in Melbourne, the features you've made in Melbourne, uh, which tend to be a little more um, uh, introspective. They feel more interior and more existential, uh, whereas these newer films, they still have the same quality, but they feel more engaged in a kind of, uh, perhaps by virtue of the vibrant culture that they take place in they there's there's a there's a stronger degree of social realism to them um that i then i think maybe your past films uh, I, I just yeah. wonder the, the degree to which um being uh sort of surrounded constantly by greek culture and politics has kind of shifted your attitude as a filmmaker or even perhaps your approach uh yeah I, well, I guess it's a bit chicken and egg though you, you you're quite un, you're not yeah. sure which came first i mean the desire was probably in me to uh, branch out and uh, just try something, uh, do something a bit different because I felt it, and uh, but 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 certainly uh, you know first uh, coming to Greece for the first time in two thousand and eight, uh, I, I I of course you know uh, could see uh, with my own eyes um, uh, what existed and when you're thrown into a situation like that, it, it's quite different from from Australia. And so, you know, you, you start learning a little bit about um, the culture, the society, and, and as a bit more time goes on, you, yeah, you learn even more things, you go deeper, and then you, you can partake of, the, uh, of the, the culture in the terms of the, the artistic um, output uh, in Greece. And so for me, it's been a, a great pleasure the last um, eight or nine years to discover Greek cinema. Uh, and then uh, after that, to discover Greek music, and and you know, and and you basically start feeling for the people, um, and and you also can see, of course, that the Greek people, Greek uh, society, has its uh, problems. That there are internal psychological problems that Greeks, uh, you know, need to overcome, and they're not doing it as well. So it's not just purely external factors; it's very complex. But when you yeah. see that some people are definitely suffering and that there is a, a government that uh, is a bit um, um, author authoritarian and fascist um, in, 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 a, in a certain way, it's not, it's not um, Russia, it's not um, Turkey, it's not, there's no full-on war uh, happening. So Greece is at a level underneath that. Uh, but yeah. there, but there's always been kind of fascist element there and and police brutality and all these kind of things and when you see that and you see people uh, fighting against that and trying to stand up for for civil rights basically you, you can't help but be impressed and and then also want to maybe contribute uh, something to that and and so that's what I've been doing in these last two films just creating works that uh, reflect that and and maybe even add to it a little bit yeah austerity mm -hmm. is really kind of the new fascism in a way um the yeah. way in which kind of um, measures taken uh, supposedly to protect a country's economic base really only tend to have a really negative uh, mm -hmm. trickle down effect where the, the poorest are those who are affected most and you can see that in the way that the kind of music is arranged, I think, in the film, where you sort of weave in a lot of these old folk songs with contemporary Greek punk music in a way that draws out the linkages between uh, very sure. old social problems, but in a, in a kind of new context. Yeah, look, look, Greece has basically been going through a, um, a, a similar thing for, for about uh, 70 years um, since just prior to the Second World War when there was a, a right-wing uh, government in place. And then after that, there were there, there was so many uh, events in Greek history. Uh, in a way, there was only uh, one really good kind of stable and productive period, um, basically from the early to mid 80s uh, for about 15 years, except Greece kind of overdid it. And I think they were, they were very, they're very happy to be a productive and 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 um, a peaceful country again that they started you know buying into the whole capitalist uh, uh, scheme of, of, of purchasing things and 
taking out loans and and unfortunately this this created the crisis um, uh, a little bit after that and and with the crisis came uh, a new um, injection of uh, fascism unfortunately with the golden dawn uh, party existing and so this kind of fascist threat has always been there for um, for many years and it sort of bubbles to the surface occasionally and and so, you know, when I show a, a, a punk band or a hip hop um, band, you know, uh, with their very, you know, modern kind of, um, you know, lyrics, uh, it, it sort of connects directly back to uh, the protest songs of the 60s and, and some of the Rembetica songs from earlier than that as well, from the 30s and 40s, uh, which, which were political in their content. Uh, so, yeah, it's all kind of connected um, in a way because it's all the one country and and you just kind of feel for Greece. You just feel, uh, you just hope that one day they can uh, get out of this uh, pattern and sort of just establish themselves as a vibrant uh, country because everyone loves Greece um, to, to go visit it as, as tourists. Uh, it's got, you know, yeah. the, the best kind of terrain and the climate, climate um, for living. Um, but, you know, you kind of just hope that... Um, yeah, that the poor, you know, won't suffer as much in, in the years to come, because what what tend what tends to happen with these crisis situations is that it's the bottom twenty percent of people who are affected, uh, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, the middle fifty or seventy percent sort of keep going on and and sort of make do, um, and then at the top there's another ten or twenty percent that still are, are corrupt and and exploiting um, situations and not paying taxes and all that kind of thing. That needs to be corrected. Unfortunately, the the left-wing government that's in place now said they would tackle that, but they haven't really uh, tackled it. They've just, you know, it was a bit like Emperor's New Clothes uh, when they came in. Uh, they've just yeah. kind of become like a, a, a normal uh, centre center party that is pretty uh, ineffectual in the end. And but it strikes me too that mm -hmm. you're, you're out there on the street with people uh, in, a, in a way that's very different from um a kind of the kind of post-modernist post-structuralist political cinema that uh, tends to play in, in in sort of western art houses over the last 10 15 years there's in contrast to that there's a real engagement with people and culture in the film uh almost like a delimiting of the space between the camera and the subject i, I i'm trying to avoid the, the word neorealism but maybe i shouldn't there's a sense, let's say, that you're, you're out there, you know. I, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're out there on the street in a way that's different to a lot of modern political cinema. That's the point I'm trying to make, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess so, especially if um, those films you're referring to are more uh, essayistic uh, in their form um, and, and it's about uh, analysis and, and uh, conjecture and, and that kind of thing. I mean, I've, I've always been a realist when it comes to... Uh, my form and my style so uh, I always um, like to show the streets and I like to show uh, people and I like to um, have, have uh, non-actors uh, I like to have you know real people in my films even when I was making uh, sort of scripted uh, fully acted uh, kind of films I, I would try and have uh, non-professionals non-actors uh, in there so uh, for me it's it, it, it's about the street. It's about, um, you know, the the dirt on the street and just capturing that. And, uh, and you know, and even then I'm kind of limited. Uh, you know, I wish I could uh, do more. I wish I could show uh, the insides of, um, of certain buildings and um, even government offices or the insides uh, more of people's homes and, uh, you know, but real homes, you know, homes really... Uh, affected uh, by the crisis um, where you know the homes mm. are just a mess and um, but you know but anyway it's uh, a lot of my cinema is uh, exterior and I do like uh, showing the streets basically so um, and and what can I say but uh, yeah it's good to uh, be part of the milieu be be um, be there present in it and and to just try and see it and and capture it uh, i think that's uh that's significant in itself like just even all the street art and all that, all that kind of thing I'm not afraid to 
ανθανόμενος δυστυχισμένος μακριά απ' της μάνας μου την αγκαλιά περιπλανόμενος δυστυχισμένος μακριά απ' της μάνας μου την αγκαλιά the street you know you know four hours five hours a day every day filming coming into contact with people talking to them is it like that or have you got a kind of um a loose itinerary that you're following uh there is a loose itinerary and and also it's i mean it's not it's not a documentary of just you know random people we meet it's uh a lot of it is uh, chosen uh people uh, chosen musicians and then trying to be part of their milieu and and part of their space um, and and then with the acted scenes it's yeah it's kind of um, um, you know planned in a way um, but on the other hand yes when we do decide to do a bit of filming we go out there and we literally do it right there and then on the street, in the cafes, um, outside certain, you know, buildings, you know, without any approval from, from anyone. And we basically just shoot it all very quickly as well. Mm-hmm. And that's another uh, element of what I've been trying to do the last few films is to uh, not uh, rehearse things um, much and sometimes not rehearse them at all. But just basically let the actors know uh, what it is we're doing, and and trust them to, to give me something that uh, it is going to be what what I want eventually, and and pretty much most of the time this succeeds. So it's a kind of you know raw I, raw yeah. cinema. I believe in this kind of you know raw uh, cinema where uh, things have not been uh, rehearsed a million times, and and you're basically uh, capturing. Uh, the the moment to moment um, reactions of of the actors. And, yeah. 
Does this mean that you don't do a lot of retakes or that perhaps even that the retakes you do do are all kind of quite wildly different? Except for the music, of course. There's not, there's not too many takes, but sometimes uh, I'll, I'll need to retake uh, for, uh, for the camera and for the editing. But a number of times in the film, even though it sounds like um, the film, uh, a lot of it was made very quickly and, and um, on the spot, uh, there are a number of uh, two camera setups in the film, um, even even some of the even sometimes with two very small cameras. Uh, so basically, I could then edit uh, freely uh, between those cameras. Uh, so yeah, most of the time uh, the film was was not um, done uh, slowly; it was done very quickly, and mm. uh, yes. then, and that's that's what I'm going for as well. Yeah. Because in that sense, the film is also a work of kind of um, uh, musicology or even um, sort of music curation as much as it is that of filmmaking. And so it's, it's interesting to see yeah. that uh, the film is reflective of your own uh, interests um, and, and what that says about your, your politics, your aesthetics. It's quite personal in that yeah. sense, I think. I think so. I think so. Like, I think... Um... I'm not. I'm not trying to be a, a Wikipedia and be completely neutral. And um, but at the same time, I wanted to have a broad range of music. And uh, but but all all music that uh, I I really love myself um, because it's still a a, a personal artistic uh, statement as well. It's not meant to be a, a definite. Um, uh, you know, catch all for for everyone that's ever existed um, with you know with radical yeah. music. Yeah. Ο 
σύνδρο και στην αντέχω αριό παιδιά Ψάχνω να βρω μια λύση ριζική Μα όλα στον ορίζοντα τα ίδια και τα ίδια Κι ελπίδες μια πάτη μακρινή Ideally, I didn't want to make two versions of the film, but I also understood that the, the original film is, is quite long and for some people maybe a little perplexing. So uh, there were a couple of reasons to make the shorter version. One was to also, to also make a film that um, didn't have any kind of issues with music rights, whereas the, the longer film um, has some music rights that I still have to clear if, if I really want to sell it. Um, so the shorter film, uh, also, uh, I wanted it to play in more uh, anarchist uh, kind of events. And uh, so I wanted something a bit shorter and something a bit more appropriate for that. So the, the festival, the shorter version, Songs of the Underground, played in a couple of weeks back, um, is a festival called B-Fest, which is an anti-authoritarian uh, festival. And uh, it, it, it went down uh, very well. There was quite a, a good audience and there was a, a good um, Q&A afterwards. Um, except there's always a kind of um, feeling of um, you know, despondency when, when discussing uh, these issues and uh, simply because things don't change much here in Greece. So... Um, uh, one one member of the audience asked me uh, about um, you know actual revolution itself you know uh, can it be achieved and 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 I said well it's very difficult um, here in Greece to really change things but but for the very um, start you have to at least have the uh, the the revolutionary um, expression uh, or. or the resistance has to still keep existing and but basically a few of the musicians were there and they joined me in the Q&A and and even they were basically saying look it, it's a depressed period we're in at the moment it's yeah. you know even just on, on the streets with with demonstrations and riots I mean that this this activity has really dropped down the last few years and uh, two years ago people were feeling very uh, positive because the left-wing government came in and it seemed that they were going to uh, do certain things, but um, but they haven't. And so I think what might happen is that the next few years, the the demonstrations uh, on the streets will uh, will increase again. And uh, but basically, there is really good things happening in 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 Athens. Uh, there are communities. There are. Um, you know, there are squats who, you know, help refugees, for example, ra housing them rather than these refugees going to the to the government, you know, barracks, which they pretty much are, which they just kind of lock them uh, in, in a room all together and they've got no freedom. The, the squats here uh, give them freedom uh, with the help of the community around because there's no, you know, money for, for food. So people really chip in and uh, so there's there's really good things happening on the ground in in the main uh, alternative area of Athens called Exarchia, which is quite a stunning uh, precinct of of, uh, of alternative um, um, uh, kind of thought and, and expression. Uh, so it, it's where the anarchists reside pretty much, but it's where also a lot of artists reside and and community minded people. So. It's it, it's one of the great areas I've ever seen with, with all my travels through Europe and in Australia and, and elsewhere. Um, so there is some some things, some positive things happening on the ground. Yeah. yeah. The experience of international film festivals and especially the whole submission process is uh, yeah. something that's is quite highly contentious and a little bit delicate to talk about. But um, let's say that... Uh, 
generally uh, underground filmmaking and independent filmmaking of uh, a more kind of formally diverse uh, aesthetic is uh, yeah. still quite challenging to international film festivals uh, who tend to want their art films or their kind of underground or protest films uh, to be more overtly political or political in certain ways or aesthetically, you know, fixed within certain forms like, you know, slow yeah. cinema or kind of Hanukkah style, uh, you know, uh, critical yeah. materialist cinema and all this kind of stuff. And of course, Songs of Revolution, uh, as distinct from Songs of the Underground, which is a more conventional documentary, Songs of Revolution doesn't fit neatly into uh, any particular category, uh, which makes it quite perplexing on a first viewing. But which uh, sort of you sort of gain more out of it the more you you, you spend time with it and think about it, and perhaps even watch yeah. it again. I mean, is that have you found that to be a challenge in terms of getting other people to sort of come on board with wanting to program it? Uh, yeah, certainly. Yeah, and uh, I think it's um, uh, look look. There's a lot that can be said about this, and and uh, so I'll just say a little bit. And uh, and what I want to say is that um, I understand that what I'm doing uh, with my form and my style and, and overall with the production budget, obviously, is quite, um, you know, raw and, and quite punky uh, in itself. And uh, I think this rough kind of nature of, of what I'm doing uh, doesn't quite fit in with the, the temper of the times at the moment, within film festivals, that is. Uh, there's a certain yeah. kind of slick thing that, that even uh, more alternative uh, art house films are going for a slick, slicker kind of approach, and 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 I'm I'm always interested in in the more um, you know, low budget thing, not not because it is low budget, but because it actually tries something a bit different, and 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 I think basically uh, it, it it's a it's a trickle down effect uh, from from the top where. I think a, a lot of uh, more commercial films are getting film festival slots now, and the the kind of the kind of mid range, um, you know, art house films. Uh, even even they're struggling to starting to struggle to to get slots in film festivals. And I think what so everything gets is pushing everything down, which means that um, a lot yeah, of it's um, like a bottle. say again. It's like a kind of bottleneck effect. Yeah, something like that. So basically, what's being squeezed out at the bottom uh, are the really, you know, no budget uh, films. They're really struggling to to get slots in film festivals these days. And um, yeah, so that that's basically it. So, so for myself, I just uh, choose which film festivals to enter and and just try and uh, you know get some screenings uh, here and there for my work. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. it's not. It's not the 60s now or, or the 70s where, you know, um, the Nouvelle Vague or, or other, other people like that could make their films cheaply and, and get into, you know, major uh, film festivals and, and, and then sort of progress from there. It's, it's quite a different uh, climate uh, that we're in at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> Θύμισε μου λίγο το όνομά σου Το πρώτο σου αναφιλητό Κορίτσι γέρασα λιγάκι Μαζί σε γύρι στον ανθό Μην είσαι εσύ αλανίτσα Το ντρόπαλο το θηλυκό Που έτρεχε σαν ένα φάκι Πίσω απ' τις ράγες του μετρό Σαν θέλα με λυσάνθη αλαβίτσα Στο φτωχικό μου σας καλώ Η Ζαβέλα με την πύρα με λυσάνθη βαρε πύρα Ελενίτσα γύρε κάτι να σου πω Λίχα λόγια και με θύση ειδωτικό Κοίταξε να δεις Εδώ η... Η ελληνική κοινωνία έχει δει και τα καλά τη και τα κακά τη όπω κάθε κοινωνία. Σίγουρα. Απλά εδώ πέρα είναι σε λίγο υπέρμετρο βαθμό και τα δύο, αμφότερα. Οπότε αφήνουν και τα δύο του λεκέδε του. 
Απλά διαλέγει και παίρνει. Τι θα πάρει από τα δύο. Είμαστε ακραίοι τύποι ναι. με συντηρητική συμπεριφορά. Αυτό είναι παρανοϊκό. Πολύ παρανοϊκό. Δηλαδή είναι σαν τα άλογα, α πούμε. Ναι. Να φύγουμε... Είμαστε ψύχρεμοι, νουνεχεί. Ναι. Ε, δεν υπάρχουν πολλά χρώματα στα αυτοκίνητα. Αν κοιτάξει, α πούμε, μια λεωφόρο, τα περισσότερα μάξια είναι προ τον γκρίζο. Μπράβο. Ενώ έξω έχουν, δεν έχουν χρώμα γύρω του. Εδώ είναι που είναι το χρώμα έντονο. Ναι. Ε, στα ρούχα θα είμαστε συντηρητικοί, α πούμε. Είναι γιατί έτσι σε μαθαίνουν αυτή τη στιγμή που γεννιέσανε, που σε βάζουν σε ένα τέτοιο τρόπο, σε ένα καλούπι. Πρόσεχε τι θα πει ο ένα, μην αυτό και εκτεθούμε. Ναι, ναι, ναι. Μην... 